Hello everyone, we're back today with another review. Yes, another review, not just me pissing about. Today we're going to be reviewing Final Girls by Riley Sager, or the person known as Riley Sager, because apparently it's a another previously published author. Um, so this one doesn't get credit for being a debut novel. It doesn't get uh, it doesn't get privileges for that because it's not your first book, even if your other book doesn't have loads of naughty swear words and stabbings in it it's not your first one this isn't your first novel so there you go so we're going to judge this as any other book by any other person it's all fine um i fucking love this book i absolutely love this book um let me tell you a little bit about it so final girls follows the story of quincy carpenter who is basically a perfectly wholesome all-american sweetheart kind of girl um she bakes she's got a successful boyfriend fiance kind of thing uh she's you know getting on with her life only problem is she's also the survivor of a slasher movie level massacre in her childhood and is repressing all the memories from it so that's fun uh she's part of this group that the media have dubbed the final girls in a obviously clever reference to the classic slasher movie trope um she's so she's one of three uh the other two are called lisa and sam lisa has been like um very pro like outgoing and promotional about being a survivor of this sort of event um, while Sam has dropped off the grid completely. Um, all of this changes of course when one day Lisa is found dead in her house and Sam shows up out of the blue on uh, Quincy's doorstep just completely unannounced so that is the setup for what is a very tense interesting and thought thoughtful take on the slasher genre in novel form so that's yeah, it's really good. So let's start with the good points. I'm not going to hold it up anymore because this is hardback. It's heavy. So, good points. I've been waiting to read a novel like this for years. Um, that may not seem like a good point if it's just something I've been interested in reading for a while. Um, but it is, to me. It's the sort of something I talked about in my previous video. This is the, the something unique that I've been looking for uh, for a long time like a lot of horror film uh, horror books you'll see are supernatural or they'll be like a thriller um but you don't get a lot of slasher movie books because it's it's hard to do it's very hard to do um because a lot of the fun in slasher films is seeing the creative kills and all that stuff um and it's hard to get that from a book but this novel gets all of the vibes like perfectly correct um it does this thing where it splits um the timeline so between the future and the events that quincy is repressing um so you get some of that um slasher movie stuff you get to have the fun with all the tropes uh the teenagers going off to party in the woods um all of that stuff um but you know you then get all of this interesting stuff afterwards it's like what would it be like to be the one who survives that so you're kind of getting uh, a slasher film and a sequel to a slasher film all in one book and it's great um it's a great idea um and it's done really well um what i think drives this book more so than the plotting and everything um is the characters um in slasher films you don't think about a lot of people don't think about the characters that much um, and that's been a big problem with slasher films in recent years. Um, the characters are often just wholly reprehensible people and you end up rooting for the killer. In this book, um, pretty much everyone is at least somewhat likeable, even people that aren't really meant to be that likeable. And don't get me wrong, everybody does some shady shit in this book. Like, there is this really interesting exploration of duality um with every single character having something under the surface that's just a little bit rotten and a little bit off some more than others um and that's really interesting because it feeds into this like who done it sort of mystery because you could believe that under the right circumstances pretty much any of these characters could be the killer um so that's really well done um the plot itself um, is paced incredibly well. 
there's a very clear escalation of events. Um, so things don't just all happen at once. Um, there's no rushing through events. There's a lot of time um, spent sort of getting to know the characters and stuff before things start going wrong, um, which is great. Um, I'm really happy about the pacing of it. Um, it goes right through to the end. Like the climax is perfectly paced. It's like once you get there, it doesn't pull you back, um, which is something I need to talk about in my next review, um, which is when a book just tugs you out of it right at the right at the last minute um but this doesn't do that it's perfect perfectly paced um the other thing with the writing style whilst it's mostly just pretty standard um there's nothing massive like major to write home about but the one technique that that made it worthy of a star for writing style um, is it does this really interesting thing where it splits the perspective. Um, so in the main chapters of the book, um, it's in first person from Quincy's point of view, but in the flashbacks, um, it's all told in third person. Um, so you're getting like Quincy went here, blah, 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 you know, you know the difference between first and third person if you're watching this channel. Um, so what it does the reason it does that though is because um like quincy separates herself from that person that she was she's like i'm not i am not that person i am a different person now i've moved on and it's really like that change in perspective from first to third person um like the flashbacks are talking about somebody else that's at that, that's a brilliant way to reinforce the themes of your book and I wish more novels would use writing style to reinforce the themes of the book that they're going for. So, top marks all round, five stars out of the five. However, of course, there are some things that don't, like, they're not absolutely perfect. Um, like, it's excellent in every area, but it's not perfect in every area. So let's talk about some of the slight negatives. Um, there's no real big slasher movie fight finish. Um, one of the most fun parts of watching a slasher film is when the final girl goes up against the killer and like stops being a victim and fights back properly. Um, we don't get that in this, um, unfortunately. The climax is great for what it is, um, and it fits the story perfectly, but I was just wanting to see that you know, hitting Jason Voorhees in the head with his own hatchet, that sort of nonsense. Um, didn't get that. Um, there wasn't enough tension building, eh, not quite enough, in those flashback in the flashback sections. Like I said earlier, a lot of the fun in slasher films is like being spooked of like, when's the killer going to strike, when's this and that. Um, you didn't get a lot of that in, in the book because um, I guess it didn't want to show... The killer lurking around in the woods um there was a lot of uneasiness and there was some tension in those scenes but it wasn't the same sort of uh thing you would get in a slasher film that i enjoy um and the last part is that everything worked out just a little bit too neatly um for the main characters in the end um everything tied up fairly well um there weren't many repercussions for the events of the story um and yeah, like that's it really. I mean, I would have liked, I guess I'm kind of a fan of a downer ending. And this was a very, like, it's a normal ending that you'd get in a book. I'm sure most people, like the majority of people wouldn't even think about it. Um, it just took me a bit off because I, I wanted to see um, some more misery, but I didn't get that. Um, so that's it. That's literally all the, all the problems I really had with the book. So basically overall, it's the perfect book for you if you're a big fan of masked maniacs and teenagers getting drunk in the woods uh, and people with damaged pasts um, it's very like it's witty it's fun it's fast paced and it's the perfect slasher movie novel that I've been waiting for for so long and I can't fault it for that so there you go that's the review of Final Girls by Riley Sager I suggest 
going to pick it up. It's a new release. If you don't like reading new releases, then wait for it to be an old release. But whatever. Go and buy it. It got my recommendation. And let's talk about recommendations. Let's go to the slasher movie film recommendation of the day. Because, of course, this is a slasher movie book. I'm going with Scream 4. Now, that might be an odd choice to some of you. Um, why not the original Scream or any of the other sequels to Scream? Why Scream 4? Um, because Scream 4, I think, deals with very similar themes to uh, Final Girls. It's about um, having your life pieced back together after like these horrific events have happened to you and how you deal with that. Obviously, if you haven't seen the other Scream films, you probably should go and least and watch the first one before you watch this one. I would skip Scream 3 because it's crap, but Scream 1, 1 and 2 and Scream 4, go for it. Slash movie recommendation done. That's the review. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like and do all that stuff if you want to. And I will see you next time.